Um, a long time ago, I wrote a a, um, a little story about a a plane crash, and it's also kind of about the invention of digital America. And so, um, I'm gonna just. Uh, change course for a second and and tell you that story because it's a it's one of these um uh stories that i wrote to be more or less in uh, it's about being in audio drag really and it's uh i could get i'm sure you know the feeling of like you're in the middle of a conversation you're hearing yourself talking you think i hear this voice for one more minute i'm just gonna kill myself so you know, I, I've tried to invent other voices so that um, I can learn to see the world in a different way, really, is, is what it comes down to. So here's um, this uh, story that was, it's called The Language of the Future, and it's from something I wrote a long time ago uh, called the United States. So here it goes. Uh, last year... I was on a twin-engine plane coming from Milwaukee to New York City, and just over LaGuardia, one of the engines conked out, and we started to drop straight down, flipping over and over. Then, the other engine died, and we went completely out of control. New York City started to get taller and taller. A voice came over the intercom and said, Our pilot has informed us that we are about to attempt a crash landing. Please extinguish all cigarettes. Place your tray tables in their upright locked position. Your captain says, Please do not panic. Your captain says, Place your head in your hands. Your captain says, Put your hands on your knees. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your knees. <laughs> this is your captain. Have you lost your dog? We are going down. We are all going down. Together. Now as it turned out, we were caught in a downdraft and rammed into a bank. It was, in short... A miracle. But afterwards, I was terrified of getting onto planes. The moment I started walking down that aisle, my eyes would clamp shut, and I would fall into a deep, impenetrable sleep. You don't want to see this. You don't want to be here. Have you lost your dog? Now finally I was able to remain conscious, but I always had to go up to the forward cabin and ask the stewardesses if I would sit next to them. Hi, um, mind if I join you? And they were always very irritated. Oh, all right, what a baby. And I watched their uniforms crack as we made nervous chit-chat. Now sometimes, even this didn't work, and I'd have to find one of the other passengers to talk to. Now you can spot these people immediately. There's one on every flight. Someone who's really on your wavelength. Now I was on a flight from L.A., and I spotted one of them sitting across the aisle. A girl, about 15, and she had this stuffed rabbit set up on her tray table, and she kept arranging and rearranging the rabbit and kind of waving to it. Hi. Hi there. And I decided this is the one I want to sit next to. So I sat down and we started to talk, and suddenly I realized she was speaking an entirely different language. Computerese, a kind of a high-tech lingo. Everything circuitry, electronics, switching. 
she didn't understand something, it just didn't scan. Now we talked mostly about her boyfriend, and this guy was never in a bad mood. He was in a bad mode. Moody kind of a guy. And the romance was apparently kind of rocky, and she kept saying, Man, oh man, you know, like, oh man, it's so digital. And she just meant the relationship was on again, off again, always two things. Switching. Current runs through bodies. And then, it doesn't. It was the language of sounds, of noise, of switching, of signals. It was the language of the rabbit, the caribou, the penguin, the beaver. A language of the past. All again, off again, always two things, switching, one thing instantly replaces another, it was the language of the future. Digital.